Tamisha Aman, sashay away. Fortunately, I don't know what the backlash is gonna be, and I probably shouldn't say this, but I am. It's me, Bussy, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be addressing the question on everyone's mind. Is Drag Race season 13 rigged? Firstly, I wanna say I've really been enjoying this season. There's so much talent in the cast, but a couple of things haven't set quite right with me. And then Tamisha Iman posted a live video a couple of days ago over on Instagram detailing how she felt about the show. And I was like, okay, so I'm not the only one. And then I actually asked y'all on my community tab, do you think RuPaul's Drag Race season 13 is more rigged or overproduced than previous seasons? And here are the results. <laughs> 85% of y'all said yes. So all of this got me inspired to do a little bit of a deeper analysis for y'all today. And first we're gonna be talking about what Tamisha Iman said in her live and then going through the episode's most controversial events of the season so far and seeing if maybe there was some riggery at play. It was Riga Morris, girl. Mor who's Morris? Tamisha's live started off answering the question, why hasn't she been posting her unaired runway looks like many of the other eliminated season 13 contestants? So to be honest, I don't post these looks because I'm pissed with the way a lot of the stuff has went from the show. But once you look at this particular season and you see a lot of the that, that slides and that goes on, it pisses you off. So no disrespect to the fans. I am so grateful for you guys, the support and all of that. Baby, soon as this contract is up and I can voice my opinion about a lot of the stuff that I seen, I mean, <laughs> the contract could be up at 12.01. I'm at 12.02, I'm coming live. <laughs> when the 12.01 hits. <sighs> concerning said, Let's just start with episode one, where in a major twist for the season, each of the queens had to lip sync for their life and they were either placed in the pork chop group or the winner's group. Lots of people said this was just an easy way for the show to pick and isolate their favorites very early on. And I mean, there may be some truth to this. Just look at who's gone home so far. Five of the seven pork chop queens are already gone by episode 11. Kamora, Joey, Tamisha, Elliot, and Denali. While only two of the six winner group queens have been eliminated from the competition. Tina and Lala. But I also think it could be argued that a queen likely to win a lip sync would also be likely to do well at other aspects of the competition. So let's take a look at some of those lip syncs individually and see what may have happened. In the first lip sync, Candy wins, I think because she was funnier and had more dynamic choreo. In the second one, Lala Ree beats out Denali with a much cleaner lip sync. Denali's outfit was falling off almost the entire time and she was really hindered by the skates that she was wearing on stage. Concerning the Tamisha and Simone lip sync, well, <laughs> if you need a dose of serotonin, go watch that because it is so great. I think Simone won by like a hair for me. I guess you could say it was a photo finish. Get it because of her Polaroid dress. As for the Utica and Goth make lip sync. <laughs> well, that was the whitest thing since milk. And I wasn't personally a fan of either performance. It could have gone either way. Gottmik took more chances with her splits. Yurika maybe looked a little more confident on the stage overall. And Gottmik ends up winning. Was this an early sign of the show picking her as a favorite and front runner? Eh, maybe. Could also just have been looked at the judges not understanding Utica's character early on. Rosie and Olivia both killed it here, but I think Olivia was an obvious winner. And finally, Tina Burner won against Kimura and Elliot, I think, for how she slayed that little Kim verse in the song alone. Overall, I wasn't mad at these lip syncs at all. I mean, I guess you could say the setup of the episode felt a little, well, like a setup. <laughs> but the outcomes felt largely right to me. I think the more interesting question is, did the producers maybe predict who could win each lip sync and then pair them accordingly? For example, swapping pairings such that Denali was with Gottmik and Lala Ree was with someone like Utica could have created an entirely different dynamic throughout the entire rest of the season. And even more interesting is the twist allowed the producers to get a glimpse at each queen's lip syncing abilities without having to actually eliminate anybody. And this is great for the producers because it can help them later on in the season decide who to put into the bottom or who to keep out of the bottom. That said, what happened in the actual episode felt fair to me. A small riggery in terms of setup, maybe, but definitely not enough evidence so far to say the show is rigged. However, in Tamisha's video, she confirms that the producers saw all of their outfits and photographed them in them before the competition actually occurred. And when production asked to see everybody's stuff prior to actually even competing, I thought that, and take pictures, I thought that was so 
horrible because to me that set up the narrative of how the show is gonna go. And Tamisha has a really valid point. If the producers know what the runways are going to look like and then they also now know each queen's lip syncing ability, well, I mean, they could practically engineer the entire season. However, rarely are runways actually affecting placements. I mean, just look at the first elimination of this season. Kimura is put into the bottom with maybe the best look on the runway. And Denali's right there with her, who also had an amazing runway. Like, if runways were going to affect placements and keep people out of the bottom, this is when it would have happened. And it didn't. And another data point here that backs up what I'm saying is that Tina made it to, what, episode 10? <laughs> having universally agreed upon bad runways, and Candy's still here at episode 11 after doing that alien thing on the runway for the beast category. It's, I think, abundantly clear that runways actually are not mattering at all this season. <laughs> Unless, of course, they're a part of the main challenge, like the bag ball. And I do want to briefly touch on this episode because a lot of people are using Gottmik's win here to justify the Gottmik is being favored in the competition argument. Now, Utica and Gottmik are in the top together, and they also lip sync together in the very first episode. That's an interesting coincidence, but I also don't think it's one that you could really write or engineer, especially on a design challenge for designs that haven't been designed yet. Overall, I think Gottmik won this one fair and square. She had three killer, except exceptionally fashionable looks that worked together as a cohesive set. Utica, on the other hand, had maybe one of the best garments ever created on RuPaul's Drag Race, out of sleeping bags no less, but overall I would say had two really strong looks instead of three, and she didn't really have cohesion between the three looks of the ball. But this was essentially another loss for Utica to Gottmik, which is a theme that we will continue to see in future episodes. And before we go any further, I want to remind you that you can help support my channel by joining my patron family over at patreon.com slash bussyqueen, just click the link in my description to get exclusive member benefits like access to the Bessie Queen Discord server, early access to my videos, access to hottest hot polls, and more. Next, let's look at the double standard in judging, which Tamisha talked about in her live saying this. You get a person like Tamisha Iman coming in with 30 years behind her and, you know, had a, a stellar career, so we want to see her jump off the roof. But then you get someone like Olivia, no disrespect to Olivia, but you get someone like Olivia who's been in the game a year and a half, and it's, oh, let's see what she can do. I think, without a doubt, this absolutely occurred, specifically in Tamisha's elimination. In fact, the Disco Challenge <laughs> was one of the most questionable in terms of judging, I think, in the entire season so far. Gottmik and Candy both loved their choreo, but only Candy was critiqued for it. And they both left a lot to be desired in terms of what they were wearing. I don't think you could really say either of them were Disco. And they edited their segments so much that you almost only saw Tina performing. They also heavily critiqued Utica this episode for what I would say was really just being herself, which didn't feel totally fair. And again, they placed her right below Gottmik. And then even crazier, in a surprise twist, they end up critiquing Tamisha for not performing at like 110%. I guess it seems like they were trying to use their knowledge of her 30 years of experience in drag to influence how they thought she should have done in this challenge. But the thing that was really weird for me as a viewer was like, Tamisha did great and maybe had the best disco outfit of the entire cast. But really, I think they were just looking for a reason to critique her and put her in the bottom so that they could wrap up that Candy versus Tamisha storyline. So Tamisha and Candy lip sync for their lives and Tamisha's eliminated. And then some people were speculating that Tamisha was only eliminated because the producers discovered her ostomy bag, which Tamisha clears up in her live saying that she actually didn't tell anybody until after she was eliminated. That last confession that we did and it revealed that I had an ostomy bag that did not take place during the show that took place completely when Tamisha was eliminated from the show. So was there riggery in this episode? Absolutely. Was there some overproduction? Absolutely. The producer saw an opportunity to resolve the Tamisha versus Candy fight with a lip sync and they took it. I don't have a problem with the way the judges are favoring Candy. Do know we all see we all are seeing the exact same thing. Now the thing that I can't say none of this is Candy's fault, none of this is none of the contestants' fault that are being favored. By episode eight, the Rusical, that episode. <laughs> Candy has established herself as the season's resident stir potter and confessional narrator. She makes good TV, and that is undeniable. In our bottom two this episode are Candy and Simone, I think definitely having had the worst performances of the cast 
by a mile. They lip sync and then RuPaul chooses to keep them both. And I agree, this double save felt weird, but only because I think we as viewers were kind of bloodthirsty for an elimination. I mean, it's episode eight and we've only eliminated four queens up until this point. For comparison's sake, season 12 eliminated their sixth queen on episode eight. Season 11 also used their double save on episode eight, but had eliminated seven queens by that point. And season 10 eliminated their eighth queen on episode eight. So stack that bloodthirst for eliminations on top of the fact that many people at this point are ready to see Candy go because they sent home their fave to Misha and combine it with the track record comparison of the two contestants, Simone's two wins and zero bottom placements versus Candy's safe performances and second time in the bottom. It would have been justified based on track record alone for RuPaul to go ahead and ask Candy to sashay away. However, I will argue that they both killed the lip sync and Candy may not be your cup of tea, but don't let your subjectivity blind you. She's a talented performer. I will say the lip sync overall didn't have that double save quality to it. You know, that feeling you get when your hair on the back of your neck is rising and you're watching the lip sync with your jaw open and you're like, oh my God, how is RuPaul gonna pick between these two queens? Alyssa and Tatiana, I'm thinking of you. Although I can totally see why Ru did it. I mean, just put yourself in her heels for a second. If you've got a double save in your pocket and you know that you have to use it before the makeover episode so that the number of queens is correct for the pairings to work and you have an opportunity to save one of your front runner slip ups and you also keep the antagonist driving major storylines, why not do it? So would I say this episode was rigged? No but I would say it was an obvious display of overproduction to use the double save when it didn't necessarily feel demanded by what happened in the episode. Now, let's talk about that makeover episode and which a little bit of riggery might've come into play. The placements in this episode were I think maybe some of the most hotly debated so far in the season online. Unquestionably though, I think Simone and Utica deserve the win. As for the rest of the girls, Rose and Tina both looked <laughs> Okay, like their looks were bad, but they were undeniable clones of each other on the runway. The character transformation and acting, Oscar worthy. They killed it. As for Gottmik and Candy, this one's a little trickier because I think they looked the best of the duos that didn't win, but their character transformations were the weakest. Gottmik's Candy was a kid that ate too much candy and Candy's Gottmik was just a little shy, but compare that to our final duo, Olivia and Denali, who had, I would say, some of the less strong looks and weakest character transformations. Olivia might've turned into Denali, but Denali didn't really turn into anyone else besides just a pretty Denali. Did I want to see Denali and Olivia in the bottom two, both who had amazing track records so far, instead of two queens who had pretty mediocre track records? No, I didn't. But the placements felt fair to me. Fans were even conspiring that Olivia sabotaged Denali's lip sync by putting her in a full length ball gown, which Olivia cleared up, had a reveal to it. So Denali chose not to do that in the lip sync and Olivia won. So while the outcome of the episode, given the circumstance, absolutely made sense, I think there is room to argue the pairing of Gottmik and Candy was very carefully calculated. The producers knew Gottmik, a professional makeup artist with an amazing wardrobe of clothing, would likely do well in a makeover challenge. And if they were looking to push through, let's say a really strong charactered person in the competition, well, it would only make sense to pair Gottmik with Candy. So yeah, there could have been a little riggery in terms of the pairings, but ultimately each duo had the same chance to succeed. And finally, wrapping up with what happened in the most recent soda can advertisement episode. The biggest criticisms I've heard on this episode are that Gottmik should have been in the bottom for her ad and Candy should have been in the bottom for her runway. Firstly, yes, I do think Gottmik deserved a bottom placement for that ad. It wasn't funny and the vision was really unclear, whereas Utica, who they placed right below Gottmik for the fourth time this competition, <laughs> actually got a little bit of a laugh out of me, even if the commercial overall wasn't so great. But concerning Candy, we've already established that runways have not mattered in this competition. So I don't really see why her wearing that alien thing for the beast runway matters in the grand scheme of things because her ad was really funny. So they have to make a decision. Are they gonna put a front runner with two wins in the bottom or are they going to put the kooky character that they have continually misunderstood throughout the competition in the bottom? Plus the producers know that Tina can kill a lip sync and they were made be a little unsure about Gottmik's lip syncing abilities. Can y'all imagine the outrage if Tina had 
without lip synced Goutmik, my god, there would have been people like burning down the WoW Presents studios. And finally, the other thing that I thought was a little weird here was the double win. I thought it was kind of unneeded. Rose was amazing, and I think a win by herself would have totally made sense, especially because Simone already had three wins at this point, and Rose had what? One? So yeah, I do think there was some riggery in terms of keeping Gottmik out of the bottom for the second time, and some overproduction in terms of giving out two wins this episode. It just isn't as satisfying when there's two instead of one. As for my final thoughts, there absolutely is some overproduction in this season leading to the season feeling rigged. An early fan favorite, Tamisha, was put into the bottom to favor the fight storyline. Gottmik, who is undeniably talented and absolutely 100% deserves her spot as one of the season's front runners, has been kept out of the bottom bottom two, two times now, where it could be argued that maybe she deserved a bottom placement instead of a safe one. However, I think we've also discovered that some of the other feelings of Riggory maybe have more to do with the subjective feelings of fans playing favorites than the show actually overproducing itself. For example, many of those first lip syncs could have been argued either way. The Candy and Tamisha lip sync could have been argued either way. The double Shantae felt wrong, but didn't really, I think, represent a pivotal change in this season, more so an over production, which just was kind of like a meh. Then there was Denali's elimination feeling bad because at this point she's a fan favorite and there's two people in the competition with the worst track record that get to stay instead of her. And we've seen time and time again, runways no longer matter, even though it feels like they should from the viewer's perspective. Overall, I'm happy with the season so far. It, it may feel a little overproduced, but what can we really expect from a reality TV show in its 13th season? I also don't think that it's more produced than previous seasons. We've seen stuff like this countless times before. And I'd love to see the franchise make some changes to avoid playing favorites and prioritizing fight storylines in the future. But also, they're not dumb. They know that these types of things will get talked about and reported on and overall be good for the franchise. Think about it. Casting robbed or misunderstood queens makes a really strong case for them to return on All-Stars, making future seasons of All-Stars better. And even though some of those placements may have felt unfair, do you really want to see Gamma go home? The answer is probably no. I sure as hell don't. So basically, all I'm saying is, it's reality TV. Put down your pitchforks, enjoy it for what it is, and just be happy that we have so many queer talented people to look up to. So spread some love, celebrate our queens, and it's not personal, it's drag. I want to say thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to press like on your way out and subscribe if you want more bussy in your life. I also want to say thanks to all of my generous patrons who make my channel possible and give a special shout out to Anthony Bradley, Cameron, Cherry Poppins, Christopher, Evan, Fractalize, Freddy, GJ Bearclaw, Glenn, Got the Morbs, Jay, Jenny, Gen X, Jonah, Johnny, Kazuko, Kevin, Geeky, and John, Maddie Morissette, Olympus, Mons, Venus, Ron, Roar, Shannon, Sky, Sunshine, Tina, Timothy, Tony, Unique, and Wheelie, who are all supporting me at my hottest fact tier. And Angel, Caroline, Craig, Hope, JB, Luke, Marty, and Cheesy Boy, Matthew, Nurse Luca, Rochambeau, Sailor, Timotheus, and Tom, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Love ya. Bye.